Hello everyone, so today we're going to be going over dictionaries in Python. Dictionaries are much like hash maps in uh, Java, C++, and other object-oriented languages, and they're essentially lists that you can call without using an index. Um, that's probably the best way to describe them now. After we watch this, you guys will be like, that doesn't define dictionaries at all, and I'll be like, I know, but it's the closest thing that there is, and then you guys will get mad at me. And then some people will be like, eh, it's not that big of a deal. And those people, we will go party. Anyways, so to make a dictionary, it's very simple. Again, just like any other variable, you define it uh, as the name equals. So we're going to call this one D. And you create it using curly braces like this. Now, let's run the dir function on this to see everything we can do with it. And we see that we have, under other than... No, excuse me, other than the constructors, which are the double underscore things, we have clear, copy, from keys, get, items, keys, pop, pop item, set default, update, and values. Interesting. Cool stuff, I guess. Well, what we're going to be doing is not really worrying about these functions in this video, but actually what we can do with the dictionary while we define it. Uh, it's just good to see what we can do with it and what the functions are called. And if you want to on your own, use the help function on those and you'll get a little quick list of what each one of those functions does. So let's redefine this. D equals, and let's say quotation soda colon quotation root beer. Uh, comma quotation food and quotation colon quotation steak quotation right curly brace now what this allows us to do is actually just say d left bracket soda right bracket and get root beer which is an interesting idea d soda we get root beer. And if we do D uh, food, we get steak. Now the importance of this is that it allows us to actually give something a name, a general name, and get a value from it that's specific. And this can even be like user input. So we could uh, we could say like variable A is equal to input um, give us food. Colon space, and then it says, "Give us food," and I say, "Eh, burger, America." Now, if I do uh, D and define it again with food colon A, if we do D food, we get the user's input of burger America, and this is this is good. Um, it does seem like a little bit overcomplicated because you're at first it's like, well, why don't I just index it? Well, it allows you to, as a programmer to see things and get them um, in new ways, and you can actually have someone give you input and then use that input to get a value um, without the user having to know the index of a list, which makes it more user friendly. So, an example of that is we could say input give us a category. And then colon space quotation, and let's say, or oh man, my bad. Uh, let's say b is equal to that input. My bad, I didn't make it a variable, which is a bad thing. Okay, so we'll say food, and now if we say d uh, b it will give us Burger America. So it allows them to even choose things from lists. So if we're displaying a list of what there is, um, which we can actually do with uh, dictionaries, I'll, I'll show you that in the next function when we go over the other functions, we can actually say like these are the categories of things and then they can type in which category they want and it can give them uh, a value. And we can even redefine it so that food is actually what it, by the way is called a key we give 
a dictionary a key for a value, like a real dictionary. You give it a word, it gives you a value for that word. Um, so we can say key is food, colon, the value can be a list of other fruit, food. So we can say burger, um, steak, corn, sushi, and hmm, beets. Now, we close that off, and if we do db again, we get the whole list of everything, which is awesome, because that means that we can then give them an entire list of food, and then we can make some program that tells people what a menu is, or shows them what the menu is for some restaurant, um, using a dictionary, which is a lot harder to do with a list, because you can't exactly take a variable, we can't, like, say, b, and like get the value of like a variable called food it doesn't work that way so what we use instead is dictionaries they give us input we take that as a key and give a value awesome um, and to list the keys I can actually just show you guys this now you just say d keys oops d dot keys um, and it will give you all the uh, keys in a dictionary. So if we define this with more of them, so let's say food, again we'll use the steak example, and drink, Pepsi. If we do d.keys, it gives us all the keys for it, so then we could access that list and say enter one of these, and we could do that using a for loop. And so, as you can see, you can do a lot with dictionaries. And later on when we get to defining our own functions, which is soon, don't worry about that, I'll show you how to actually link a function to a key in dictionary so we can even make a game engine with this. Uh, not like a game engine like for Minecraft or something like that. I mean, I'm sure they use some sort of like hash map or dictionary in there, but ours won't be that uh, complicated because that would take a lot of time and effort. And these videos I try to keep under 10 minutes even though I really suck at that. Um, anyways. So yeah, this is part one of dictionaries. I just wanted to kind of show you guys how to define values in there. We can also use tuples inside the dictionaries, or we can even return a dictionary inside of a dictionary. So we could say, like, food is equal to a dictionary of other food. So we could say category food and then have other keys in there for, like, burgers and another category for, like, Asian food and another category for Mexican food or whatever, and have that return another list of items and things like that uh, which again makes this all user friendly or much more user friendly because they can grab things out of dictionaries instead of having to like enter in an index for a list that they might not know and it allows you as a programmer to do things um, in a less complicated manner anyways thank you guys for watching uh, tune in next time for the next video which is dictionaries part two and if you like this video subscribe um, if you liked it press the like button that always helps favorite it that's awesome too and if you want to because you have other nerdy friends that like to program feel free to share this on Facebook or Google Plus or whatever share it on your own social media site because that is even awesome to me thank you guys for watching and I'll be seeing you later